doing stick figures. And the thing that I did, rather than just stick figures, is I put clothes on them and hats and all these little things. And they carried on, oh, those are wonderful. So I got positive reinforcement with that as a little girl. And then it wasn't until college that I began taking art. I came out, I welded for 10 years. And then I have been stone carving for about 40 years now. So I had starting, I graduated in 1965. So starting next year, I will be doing this for 50 years, which I can't believe. It's been very fast. What I know about stone, I know from working with it. And um, many geologists have said, you need to take geology. Well, yes, I do. I just never did. So everything I do is probably from instinct, basically. And trying to engineer as well, trying to get things to balance and to stand up and things. For the last few years, I'm driving from Lexington to here. I go to horse farms. And so quite a few horses have started coming out in my work. But they are not um, appropriate horses. They are not realistic horses. They're just getting the gesture, the feel of a horse. And um, I don't ride, but I absolutely love the horses. So I've done several pieces in the past years of those. And I'm thrilled with the Arts Council because you all are so good at marketing and promoting. Right. And Kentucky has a lot of wonderful artists. Yeah. And um, very craft, very craft oriented, mm -hmm. the whole state. A lot of my really large pieces, like 12 foot pieces, um, one of my first, well, all of my first projects when I was hired, I was told to do what I wanted to do. Even down to selecting the stone that was going to be used, like Carmen and Brentwood Farms. I contracted for an eight foot sculpture out of Tennessee marble. And they said, just do whatever you want to do. And I went to the quarry and there laid a 12 foot piece of stone that was just incredibly beautiful in its natural form. And so I managed, this was in an old abandoned quarry, and we managed to pull that stone out. And um, so I did four feet more than I was supposed to do for the commission, but the piece just turned out really beautifully. They were very pleased with it. And so many times on commission work, they'll hire me and give me free reign. And I feel that gives the best piece usually. Because I'm not going to work less if I have a commission. I'm going to work that much harder. And then privately, I've had people commission me, and they're real nervous about it. And, um, I'll ask them to tell me what they like about my work, uh, what kind of stone would they like to have, uh, and have get their input. And then at times, if they like something I already have in the studio, um, I'll hold it until I get their commission completed to make certain they like whatever they've commissioned. And of course, only on the great big pieces, uh, I can only do those by commission because they're so costly. Mm -hmm. And then on smaller pieces, if someone doesn't like it, they don't have to take it. Mm -hmm. I don't know my counties very well, but we went beyond Nicholasville and we were looking for Palisades stone. And somebody said, well, there's a farm down by the river, and they have the stone. So we went down to the farm, found the farm, and there was a man named Buck who owned the farm. And he said, oh, yeah, I have marble. I have stone everywhere. Come on down. So we found one big piece. And uh, when I say big, 250, 250 pounds, so, so big. And so that became hot brown, which is my signature horse I, from, from Kentucky, signature of Kentucky. It's just, it's fun to do the horses. And of course, I'll be at shows where people say, I don't see a horse, you know. <laughs> Palisades rock is very, very hard. It's just a limestone, which you think of as Minnesota, Indiana, they're very soft. And the stone in Kentucky is very, very hard. And I did have an artist come up from Knoxville last week, 
and he brought me a piece of Tennessee marble, and I gave him some Kentucky stone. But otherwise, I haven't seen people carving the Kentucky stone. And um, and I love the warm topes and the veining and the real beautiful rocks. I work with pneumatic tools, big saws, big grinders. I have never hand pointed um, like the Italians do and did. They would take a hammer and a chisel and just point it and rough it out. But I found very early on when I started that I had to protect my hands. An impact like that will destroy your hands quickly. So I saw the stone and break it away. And then I grind, and then um, I use a bushing tool, like a mini jackhammer. And I have large grinders to work holes through my stone. And um, then sand it to 80 grit, and then I hand sand, basically. And there are a lot of openings, lots of um, rounded surfaces. So you just have to hand sand, hand sand. And some stones are just so very, very difficult. That's one good thing about working as long as I have, because I've learned what I want to work and what I don't want to work and what works well. And I work with the white Colorado marble, which is just beautiful. It's almost perfect. And um, when I started out, I worked with Carl Rouge, which is a Tennessee stone. And it's very, very busy. It's like this the piece over here. It's the red piece. And um, so I love the heavenly vein stones. But to, through the years, I've switched from heavy veining to the pure white marble. Probably the only stone carver who's never carved Carrara marble, the famous Italian marble. But I think that um, the Colorado is probably every bit as beautiful, if not more so. So, I've worked with a lot of Italian materials. And Tennessee stone's very, very hard. I waited years to work it because I was so familiar with it. Some of the, every bathroom petition in Tennessee is Tennessee marble, usually. So, it's just very functional. I've worked with Italian, Spanish marbles, lots of imported stones. And years ago, in Knoxville, it was the marble industry in the late 30s and 40s. Uh, they quarried and sewed stone all over the country. In the back, I've got, I've got crates of it, and, you know, in four by four crates, I've got a lot of stock. And then I have just lots of stock sitting out, the next sculpture. And I like to have four or five pieces at a time. Um, I like to have a lot going so I can jump around with processes and not, again, it's protecting my hands. Art is a luxury. You know, it's a real luxury to be able to have art, to collect art. But it, to me, it's also what makes our lives work.